Just to skip over because I think they could be a little bit. My name is Eric Wielander. Welcome to my channel. And today we're going to do a quick Q&A episode. So I was in the middle of editing this video that I was going to publish tomorrow uh, about the Homebridge ZP plugin or Zone Player for Sonos. And I'm just realizing as I'm going through it and, and editing, it's like there's so much that I just skipped over in the video that's like more in depth, detailed knowledge about the plugin that I'd really like to share with you guys. So um, I think it's a really cool way to control Sonos with Homebridge, but I'm gonna do that for my next video. So I'm kind of getting in this routine of every other Sunday I'll publish a video. So this video is going up on Sunday. So two Sundays from now, you'll hopefully see a video on the Homebridge ZP plugin. But in the meantime, I get asked questions on social media about all kinds of different stuff related to smart homes and also get that through email. And I just see conversation around the internet about smart home stuff. So I wanted to pull some of these questions that I've gotten uh, and, and do a quick Q&A episode here because I think these questions kind of answer a lot of other questions that people have. And of course, you can go to my website and send me an email there. You can, uh, you know, at at mention me or send me a message on something like Twitter or Instagram. And, you know, I'm not the best at replying promptly to any of those, but I should be able to reply at some point. And um, then also those kind of questions might anonymously find their way into a video like this. So James sent me an email and says, Hi Eric, I'm in the beginning stages planning in making a quote smart home. Where should I start when developing and putting pieces together for my smart home project? James, this is a great question and I think a lot of people wonder about where to start with a new smart home, whether they're starting from scratch, it's their first time, or they're moving some existing equipment. Um, you know, I think initially you want to think about a few different things. Uh, specific to the home, I think you want to look at where does the internet come in and, you know, where can you put the internet connection and the various hubs you have and is there a way you can find a place to put those that's kind of out of sight, out of mind, um, whether that's inside of a piece of furniture you have to get or inside of an existing closet. Uh, a great location for that can really become the hub of a lot of things in your smart home. The other thing to consider there is a lot of these hubs, you they communicate wirelessly with accessories. So ideally you want the internet and that to come into a relatively central point in the home. Uh, so for example, my uh, server closet where I have a lot of that stuff is right under the main staircase in our home, which kind of runs up the back center of our house. And that just seems to be a nice place to put everything because it's relatively, you know, it's in the back part of the home, but it's kind of in the middle. So uh, then also, if you're just getting into smart home tech related to this and, and just starting from scratch, I think, um, you know, what I, I would start with smart lighting. So uh, I think smart lighting has huge benefits and there's so many different ways to set it up. If you rent a place right now, you can get into smart bulbs. If you're looking to buy a home, you can get into smart switches. Uh, just get over the anxiety of the initial the first install with wiring a switch if you've never done it before and after that you'll be fine. And then from there, I just say setting up some basic automations is really helpful. So if you're able to make some outdoor lights smart, uh, then you can, you know, turn them on at sunset, turn them off at sunrise, uh, or, you know, creating a good night routine is another good, just, you know, it's a scene, but it's not really technically an automation, but uh, just having a good night scene in HomeKit that you can press and then turn off a bunch of the smart lights and hopefully over time, all of the lights in your home when you go to bed, that's really convenient. Uh, so I think those are some good places to start. Brian via email asked, uh, you mentioned in one of your videos about routers that can be used with HomeKit. Uh, in your opinion, what are the top three routers that are both secure and that work best with HomeKit? So I don't know about the top three. Um, I don't get in a lot of like routers to test and then 
tear down my entire home network and then set it up with new routers. Uh, that's just really time consuming and, and stuff that at this point in the channel, I don't have the, the setup or the budget to pursue. Um, that said, I've had great luck with Eero. Uh, I think they're a really great Wi-Fi option. Um, and you know, they are owned by Amazon. I know some people don't like that about them. I'm completely fine with it. And, uh, you know, they've been very good at supporting this new HomeKit secure router stuff. Uh, you know, Netgear, Orbi is another popular brand out there. Um, I just had a, a friend who lives in the neighborhood who's into smart home tech. He got uh, a Netgear, one of their new Wi-Fi 6 uh, mesh systems earlier this year. And he's had a variety of different issues with that. So I, I don't know. I mean, I, I think... I, um, I really like Eero and that would be my pick and recommendation. Um, I'm sure there are still other people who've had problems with Eero's, but I like their Eero Pro series. I have three Eero Pros, uh, so the full size base stations. I don't have any of the beacons or any of the new like $99 ones. I went all in with the, the Eero Pros a number of years ago. And that was at upgrading from the first generation Eero's, uh, which I had for a while and were great too. So that's my pick for Wi-Fi. Now, a question about HomeKit cameras. Anthony on Twitter writes, looking for a HKSV, HomeKit Secure Video, camera for the outside of a new house we're in the process of building. Already have a HomePod and a storage plan, I'm guessing iCloud storage plan, considering the UV Cam 2 Pro 2K or Logi View. Any recommendations? So I've not tried the UV Cam Pro 2K version, um, I think it looks very compelling. Like you look at the image quality, uh, Bradley Chambers over a nine to five Mac, I'll link in the show notes, did a great comparison of uh, installing the Uficam 2 Pro 2K version. And um, yeah, it, you know, if you can afford it, I think it's definitely gonna give you a better image than the Uficam Pro 2. Uh, but it might not always be worth the investment. It's just something to think about how important is image quality for you. And then the, or the low G view. So my pick between those two is if you can run the wiring safely to a Logitech view, I think then eliminating the need to charge the cameras via battery and just having this really simple very pure setup of just, you know, you're just setting it up with HomeKit. There's no extra apps or anything to deal with. I think that's fantastic about the Logitech Circle View. And so I would recommend that over the UV Cam 2 Pro or 2K, any of those, uh, if you can run the wiring. Now that said, a lot of people don't have options to run the wiring when they're talking about outdoor cameras. So that's where Eufy comes in. And uh, yeah, I still think the Eufy Cam 2 is a, is a solid product and something you, you can definitely uh, be very happy with, uh, is, you know, especially in the cases where you can't run wiring for a Logitech Circle View camera. So next question about HomeKit hubs. Morty on YouTube in the comments of a recent video mentioned, I noticed you have Starling next to the Hoobs and you talk on Nest and Starling. Is the Hoobs not bringing in Nest cams and doorbells at, as Starling does. I definitely recommend if you're trying to integrate Nest with HomeKit that you get a Starling Home Hub uh, as opposed to trying to do it with HomeBridge. Now, I get the desire to have less hubs and you can do it with HomeBridge or Hoobs. Uh, you do need two different plugins for that. There's, there's a separate one to do the cameras, uh, the HomeBridge Nest plugin itself does not do the live video feed with the cameras. Uh, the, you still have some more complex setup there. And I think, you know, uh, Starling takes care of the two key pieces of this, which is authentication and the live video feeds. Starling makes that way easier. So, um, and, and I think in, in the end, probably way more reliable as well. So, I would highly recommend Starling if you can possibly have two different hubs and afford that investment. Uh, but, you know, it is physically possible to do it with the hoops, but that's, that's what I prefer is using Starling. And the last question I got asked a little bit ago and I missed the question and didn't respond to the person. I feel terrible, but it's something I've seen come up about a number of these cameras is, uh, this was specific to, can you use the Logitech Circle View as a baby monitor? 
And, you know, I think a number of these cameras theoretically could work as baby monitors. Arlo's made the Arlo baby monitor that works with HomeKit as well. Uh, personally, my stance on baby monitors is I'd rather have something that has uh, that kind of access to viewing my children to be uh, a closed circuit that doesn't touch the internet. So um, I've bought with my own money for our home the uh, Eufy baby monitors and that I really like because you can have multiple cameras going to one monitor and it will cycle through them and I'll do more of an elaborate review on these probably later on in the year uh, when I've had some more time to play with all the features especially with multicam we only have one child right now two more on the way so um, I'll let you know how that goes but uh, I've been very impressed with that. You, of course, you're not going to get the video quality. Those are at 720p, so it's not you know a 1080p or 2K image. But it's going to be purpose-built hardware for monitoring children in cribs. So it's going to be way better designed to have the video feed always on or have the always running stream of audio, where then the video turns on if there's a sound. Um, you know, and so. I think that is convenient and I also, while well, these cameras are all very secure and I, you know, have, you know, don't have doubts about people getting into the video feed, I do just like the concept with something like a baby monitor of it's, uh, you know, not possible for someone to get in over the internet. Uh, yeah, I mean, they could probably come to my home and snoop on the wireless signals maybe, but uh, if they're coming to my home, I probably have other issues uh, than just getting into my baby monitor feeds. So well, give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. If you have your own versions of answers to some of these questions you'd like to share in the comments, I'd love to hear them and I'm sure others would as well. Uh, and you know, if you have questions, just feel free to hit me up either you know, in the comments or on Twitter or Instagram or via email. And uh, I can't be tech support for everybody's smart home problems on the internet, but uh, you know, I, I hopefully will be able to respond to your kind of bigger, higher level questions about what to do in certain situations. Subscribe to the channel if you don't want to miss the upcoming video on Homebridge Zone Player. And, and also stay tuned this week as this video is publishing. I was a guest on the uh, Smart Home Related Podcast recently, and that episode is going to be dropping and going in depth into Homebridge and Hoobs. So I recommend checking that out if those things are uh, something you're into. Thanks again so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.